The alarming rise in the use of anabolic steroids among adolescents has emerged as a critical issue. Anabolic steroids, which are typically associated with improving sports performance, increase in muscle growth, carry substantial health concerns when overused, especially in young bodies that are still developing. And in today's video, we're going to be delving deep into the reasons behind this escalating trend. The amount of muscle an individual can put on naturally without the use of performance enhancing drugs is going to be dependent on several factors. One of them being your genetics, age, gender, how hard you train, your nutrition and recovery. The amount of progress someone makes varies from person to person. However, one study suggests that beginners gain around four to seven pounds of muscle in the first three months of lifting. And if that progress is maintained at a constant rate, you can expect to gain around 16 to 28 pounds of muscle in your first year of lifting. Some people might be able to pack on more muscle. However, if you catch someone on Reddit talking about how they packed on 40 to 50 pounds of muscle, naturally, they're most likely chatting shit. For most people, right, your newbie gains typically cap out at around six months to a year, but obviously you're still going to be seeing progress as you advance in your lifting journey, but just at a slower rate. So when it comes to the amount of progress someone should expect to see after a year of weightlifting, you should be able to bench about, you should be able to bench around one to 1.5 times your body weight. For your squat, right, you should be able to squat around 1.5 to 1.75 times your body weight and finally when it comes to your deadlift right you should be able to deadlift around 1.75 to 2 times your body weight one of the ogs at my gym used to tell me that when it comes to your first year of weightlifting right you should aim to build a very solid foundation instead of trying to reach your peak so if you have hit these numbers you should be extremely proud of yourself because this puts you in the top 10 percent of the strongest guys at any public gym me personally right i started gym october 2021 and i'm gonna put a picture up right now and this was me september 2022 and this is me currently now i'm not showing you these pictures to brag and be a prick but to show you that you can build somewhat of a good physique without hopping on stairways just straight off the bat obviously i know i ain't no chris bumstead i ain't no alex eubank but i feel like i was able to build a somewhat good foundation you know what i mean obviously genetics also play a very big part when it comes to the amount of progress you're going to be seeing in gym one important gene that's been studied to impact muscle size and strength is actn3 actn3 stands for alpha acetin free it's a protein and fast twitch muscle fibers these types of muscle fibers allow muscles to contract rapidly they are necessary for power sports like weightlifting and sprinting studies have found that a lot of people have a defective version of actn3 so if your genetic test showed you have a functional actn3 gene it means you probably have an advantage in strength training and bodybuilding actn3 is just one of the several genes that contribute to an individual's ability to put on muscle mass and gain strength. Genes are really, really complicated and we still don't fully understand how they all interact with one another to make each person unique. I feel like gyms are often perceived as these spaces for physical transformation and self-improvement. Now, while I do think this is true, I feel like gym also leads to this unhealthy obsession with chasing this perfect physique, you feel what I'm saying? Even me personally, right, ever since I've started gym, I've never really felt truly satisfied with my body, you know? And I know comparison is the thief of joy and you should never really be comparing yourself to other people. But sometimes I even catch myself comparing myself to my friends sometimes because a lot of my friends are in really, really good shape right now. Like they look really, really good, no homo, obviously. Like they look good though, they look good. Like they have really nice broad shoulders, nice shredded abs. Like, and I end up just comparing my physique to theirs when you really should never do that. When you're seeing gym influencers like Shizzy and Swole, right? You start thinking to yourself, is this gym shit even worth it? You know, that's why I constantly go remind myself that even though my favorite fitness influencers, they work extremely hard. They're still taking these pictures and photos with the most perfect lighting, the most perfect angle and with a really good pump. And I think that's why it's so important to take progress pictures and videos of yourself. Just as a little reminder to show how far you've come as an individual. For like the way the gym community is moving right now, 
if you're not 16 years old benching 100 kg you're considered a failure you know what i'm saying and if we look at the statistics less than one percent of the global population can bench 225 I feel like there's a lot of misinformation when it comes to actually taking anabolic steroids. I believe that a lot of people feel as if steroids are just a quick fix for muscle growth, when in reality, anabolic steroids can indeed increase muscle mass and strength, but they are not a substitute for consistent training and a proper nutrition plan. A good example of this is John Joshua James. Broski hopped on steroids the first day he stepped in gym. He literally tried to speed run gym. And because of this, he has completely destroyed his back. Steroids after four months has done this to my back, and I gotta say it's worth it. After doing a bit of research, I found out that steroids actually give you back acne, and it's not great. My back is completely covered in scars, and it feels pretty terrible all the time, but I do like being able to go to the gym more. I finally hit 180 pounds, so I'm gonna keep doing it. A lot of my friends have made more progress than him just by staying natty. Another misconception about steroids is that steroids are safe, at low doses and you won't receive any side effects when in reality even at low doses and for short periods anabolic steroids can cause adverse effects on your the body risk, now the risks associated with steroids are not just solely dependent on dosage or duration but also influenced by the individual's genetics existing health conditions and other lifestyle factors so just bear that in mind before you turn to the dark side Another misconception about steroids is that they're not addictive. In reality, prolonged use of anabolic steroids can lead to physical and psychological dependency and users might even experience withdrawal symptoms when they decide to discontinue their steroid use. And experience things like fatigue, irritability, loss of appetite, mood swings and the addictive nature of steroids can even develop into a steroid use disorder. Another misconception about steroids is that all steroids have the same effects and risks when in fact there are different classes of steroids, each with distinct properties and purposes. For example, the side effects of taking Trembolone are oily skin, acne, and accelerated scalp hair loss. Also bear in mind that these side effects also strongly rely on the individual's genetics. And if you were to take a steroid like Osimethylone, the side effects are depression, headaches, rapid weight gain, vomiting, and stomach pain. The only real justification for taking steroids is if you want to become a bodybuilder and you want to compete on the grand stage. But if you're just doing a regular nine to five, bro, it really isn't worth it, bro, because you're not going to show your body off to anyone when you're in an office job, for example. You feel what I'm saying? I know a lot of you guys aspire to be the youngest Mr. Olympia, but I'm telling you now, nobody really gives a fuck. I'm telling you. Take it from C-Bomb himself. Oh, is it wrong to hop on gear at a young age? Absolutely, yes. Because I'm telling you right now, when I was young, I thought it would be super cool to be the youngest pro, the youngest Mr. Olympia, the youngest whatever. No one gives a flying fuck. I was pro at 21, on the Olympia stage at 22, I believe. And no one knows that, no one cares, no one remembers. A year at, a week after it happened, people were like, wow, look how young he is. And then no one cares. Do you want to be the best at something? For, for someone who's young or do you want to be the best period personally i want to be the best period and on top of that bro think about your glizzy bro don't be surprised when your girl hops on another man's wood because you're not fulfilling her anymore that's what i'm shooting with today <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it and i'll catch you guys in the next one yeah Bye,